I've been watching the amazing Mr. Milliard's channel and uh, he makes it look very easy to make gaskets so I've got some gasket material now and uh, how hard can it possibly be? So apparently we take the piece and we oop, rub a thumb all around the piece pressing very hard let's get it down on there without moving it press very hard with my thumb I've seen other people that spray oil on the piece as well to make an oily mark but this seems like it will work just as well What do we think? Is that enough? Let's see. I can just about make that out. You, you might not be able to see it. And the other thing I've got, can I see the holes just about, is this punch. Let's give it a go. Woohoo! That looks pretty good. Yeah, the only problem is I can't quite see the holes, so I didn't rub hard enough. slightly different technique and rub with something a bit harder Yeah, those holes are so small it doesn't make a mark okay a slightly different approach for the holes. In fact, why don't I just draw around it for to be double double sure. I obviously don't have the the mill yard touch. Okay let's try that. That's clearer to see. Just cut him out. I'll take that and a new panel to cover the old one. Where's the old one? Here's the old one. A bit skanky. This one, new, stainless, heavy. Yes or no? Don't comment on that. Uh, so that's ready to go on, but won't be going on until last until. Uh, well, last-ish, after I've got, yeah, I'll put the gearbox all together and make sure it works before I put that on. There we go. I started a bit of an unintentional lengthy debate on, um, on the internet about whether to use gaskets on their own or gaskets with gasket goop. And um, I've decided to give this stuff a try. I think it's, it's called, I want it focus. Uh, too bright. Anyway, uh, three bond, uh, which allegedly is the same as Yammer bond or Honda bond or any something else bond. 
and so I'm going to give this a try. I've cleaned up all the faces. Um, this one seems alright. Uh, so I'm going to have a bit of goop, a bit of gasket, a bit of goop, and then the the cover. And I've cleaned this up too. I will admit, having read the manual a bit about just to check, I'm, I knew where this piece goes, the uh, the indexing piece. Uh, and there's a little mark here, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, so I did cheat and, and just check that. Done a couple of things while you weren't looking, and that is I've put the plunger in. Um, that's because in order to get that indexing lined up, this ha it has to be in neutral, and I needed that. I wanted to make sure it stayed in neutral. Uh, I've put the little grub screw in that holds this rod in place that the forks slide up and down on, and I've also put the nut and the tab washer. I had to reuse the old tab washer because I can't get a new one on the nut that holds the cam plate in place. But other than that, uh, we're kind of where we were and finished. So I'm just going to open the tube of goop and cut the end off the nozzle. And let's go for it. Gonna be use it sparingly, as they say. Uh, goop, then gasket, it should be something like that, then more goop on get it right around the other side again sparingly oh one more thing there somebody had use a screwdriver to lever this piece off and there were a little few raised edges so I did just dress them on a um, piece of emery on my little surface plate because I that felt like a good thing to do right uh, this way and this way and then there's a little punch mark there's a punch mark in this indexer and there's a punch mark in the back and you keep those lined up so it's like that but I don't need to do that until it engages so just as I There, line the marks up. Give it a wee tap. Why oh, is that so stiff? I think it's just this bearing. Again, make sure these stay lined up. Well, so 
So that has now lined, oh, it says he lined up with the gear. Yeah, there we go. And there is only one screw holds this one in. Which is not that one. Actually, it was one of these Allen screws, wasn't it? Let's try this one. So you get to check those marks still line up, which they do. Now I had a lot of posts this morning, and thank you Mr Postman, everything showed up apart from um, the one piece that I needed for the outer cover. So what I'm going to do I also got, yeah, so I got a new outer cover because the other one was shot. I'll, I'll talk about that a bit more in detail in a minute. But I've got a new, another outer cover, um, and the only piece that's missing from this outer cover is the, is the bushing for the kickstart. Kickstart, so there's a, there's a bushing goes in here this doesn't this is slapping about so uh, I can't fit the kickstart which is very annoying uh, so what I'm going to do in the meantime actually just to tighten this down is I'm just going to fit the outer cover uh, without any of the innards for just for now and then I will have to come back to this when that bushing arrives because if I fit this now it will tighten up the inner cover nicely with all that gasket goop in it New washers, new fasteners. So what will happen now is when I come to take the outer cover off, I won't be able to get it off. It will be too tight. But we'll see. So that is the inner cover, nicely snugged up anyway. While I'm here, there's a couple of other pieces I can fit. I can fit the new drain plugs. drain and level plug. As this is uh, stainless going into alloy, a little bit of copper slip on the bolt doesn't do anybody any harm. So 
So that one is the level. So yeah, that's about as far as I can go. Uh, I'm going to wait until I've had the gear index on and everything before I fit the copper plate. Uh, and then yeah, the only, the only, I think the only slightly tricky thing is getting this, this bushing to fit in. I'll probably warm this up in the oven or something uh, so that goes in easily. But this cover, oh yes, I'll show you the other cover. So this hole in the top is, I think we talked about this, is completely shot where the clutch, the clutch arm goes in. I don't know if you can see this, this surface here. This has been polished and, <laughs> and it's been, it's, it's, there's so much been taken off. Someone's had this on the buffing wheel and just gone, <laughs> and done it and all of the this is all polished as well all these edges I I just mm, I don't understand why anyone would do that so I need to get this probably a light skim on a milling machine what I don't have um, I might be able to have a go doing on the surface plate with with wet and dry or whatever the other side I'm a, that's a bit trickier um, I think it might need to be built up a bit actually a bit of weld built up around there and then machined back but I might have to talk to some of my machining chums I suppose I could have taken this kickstart bush out but I would probably wreck it and taking it out so I yeah I have ordered a new one of those so yeah uh, I'll put this out to cover on just so I don't lose it So a quick update on where the rest of the bike is. Um, got some handlebars on it. No, they're not BSA ones. They're aluminum, but then they're rentals and they'll do for now. Uh, I've got the bolts, etc., studs to mount the engine and the gearbox, the gearbox plates, etc. All those ready, waiting for the gearbox when I finish it. Uh, the rear sets have gone on, so that was a quick job that I did whilst you weren't looking. The rear brake etc is all finished apart from, I've got the spring, spring is here for the return. Um, the only thing missing is the brake lever itself and the brake pedal and the brake rod, which uh, all they need is money. To get those and I'll be ordering them soon uh, and then back to some interesting stuff in the middle here I'll just check focus something like that anyway uh, so what's going on here is if I were to make it a Catalina it would have a central oil tank that looks like this goes in something like that and it would have a metal plate like this with these brackets that gets welded onto the frame 
about there for the oil tank to go on top of it. Um, so a little bit of tricky welding. I'm not the world's greatest welder. In fact, I would argue I'm possibly one of the world's worst. I don't know. Um, but I was going to do that. That was what I was going to do today because all of this, most of these parts arrived today. And then I thought I'll do, I'll see if I can do what I did on another bike, which was to take the battery mount, which normally goes on like that and to turn it upside down and the other way around and hold it on like that. Now I don't have any bolts for that at the minute but that is almost identical to the almost identical position to the other one. So then oil tank on the top a lovely strap like this that goes over the top um, and normally would go in these two holes here but I'll just have a single I'll make a little strip I'll have a little strip underneath the battery you get the idea in like that um, then there's the padding and the oil pipes and the oil pipes and all of that kind of stuff that goes on oil filter etc so that's going to go in there so i was going to do some welding now i've decided against it um, what that does mean is that while i'm waiting for the nuts and bolts and things i think i think it means that i can put the engine in so i was holding back from putting the engine in before because i wasn't sure if i was going to do welding and stuff so when people get back that can help me with the lifting that's what I think I'm going to do. So in a vague attempt to not get the frame scratched, I'm going to tape it up. the engine yep not light yeah I'm really not going to do it on my own there we go <coughs> so the plan is I'll try and lift the engine in from this side whilst not scratching anything and you try and not squash the cat and get those two bolts in That one there, and that one. The only thing is, does it look like I've got it in there? Yeah. <coughs> okay, and then one of these. Frame. Wow. 
Well, that feels like some progress has been made. Um, we have made a slight deliberate mistake and we've missed out the bolt at the bottom there, which you can't get in. So I'll do that probably in the morning. It's getting a bit dark now. We'll just have to take these two out and one at the back and just tilt, tilt the engine back a bit to slide that one in. I think that should be fine. Um, hopefully it's not going to come out again. But yeah, almost looks like a motorbike. Thanks for watching. See you later.